Though major story moments or heartbreaking set pieces aren't usually the main things highlighted when fans reminisce about their favourite video game memories, the hours, days and weeks spent on the same multiplayer maps in the best competitive titles shouldn't be taken for granted. Often forgotten about as well is that it takes far more skill to create a multiplayer map that fans don't mind playing over and over again. You need to theoretically be able to jump into the same map hundreds of times without it ever getting old, with each new round teaching you something new and letting you enjoy countless fist-pumping moments along the way. With that said, familiarity also breeds contempt, and there are some multiplayer levels, both good and bad, that have completely broken everyone over the years. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 infuriating multiplayer video game levels that totally broke you. First up, an honourable mention, GTA Online Sandbox. GTA Online Sandbox has always been a hive of scum and villainy, and as the years have worn on, players have been given access to even more tools to terrorise other people with. While it was always frustrating to log on and get immediately gunned down by someone driving around in an armoured truck, now it's not uncommon to spawn into the map and come face to face with flying cars that can blow your goddamn bollocks off at a moment's notice. It would be fine if you were guaranteed the tools to fight back, but GTA Online's embrace of free market ideals means that players with the most money get the biggest weapons, and if you can't afford your own flying car to get revenge, then, well, you crap out of luck. You can still have a good time if you get the right server, but the griefing has become so prevalent over the years that the title's passive mode is an almost essential feature if you don't have your own squad to roam the map with. Number 10, Guardian, Halo 3. For many, Halo 3 will be the first game that properly got them into competitive multiplayer. The Xbox 360 Classic has perhaps the most iconic multiplayer suite in the shooter's history, and its array of maps, including Guardian, is partly responsible. Love it or hate it, the combination of being able to be sniped from afar if you're in the center and booted off the edge into the infinite void below acts as an unpredictable element that few other Halo maps past or present actually have. Sure, that makes it unique, but for every person who finds that fun, another will be inspired to rage quit from the session entirely. Especially on the free-for-all modes, the map essentially becomes a straight sprint to the Gravham at the center, with the first player there taking the most fire, but then being able to turn the tide of the battle with one swift swing. Number 9, Liang Tower, Overwatch. Overwatch's multiplayer maps are mostly pretty well balanced, but there are a small smattering, especially in the base release back in the day, that you dreaded would pop up on the rotation next. Liang Tower was by far the worst offender though. Although other maps could be frustrating because of the many different vantage points and areas you had to keep an eye on, this had the exact opposite problem, with there being few places to truly conquer for a tactical advantage. The choke points around the objectives amounted to little more than small rooms, making explosives almost essential and turning every battle into a juggling match as you attempted to not get knocked around, but also keep an eye on other players. Throw in the fact that there's plenty of pits you can be knocked into as well, and Liang Tower just becomes total anarchy, where the luckier team can often bluff their way to victory. Number 8, The Stack, GoldenEye 007. If you ask anyone to think back on GoldenEye's multiplayer, they'll no doubt picture everything being played in the stack. A labyrinthian series of corridors and bare rooms, the level's minimalist aesthetic put all the focus on the shooting, not needing any bells or whistles to still be iconic. Just how sparse the area was did make for some particularly intense firefights, as it was easy to get locked in claustrophobic hallways with another player blocking the exit. Likewise, while the labyrinthian nature wasn't exactly difficult to get a hang of, it meant each open room had multiple entry points, leaving you easily blindsided if you weren't constantly alert. Fortunately, Stax Pros outweighed its cons, but any GoldenEye player will be more than ready to admit that the level broke their spirits on more than one occasion, especially if someone was camped in the corner with a bunch of proximity mines. That was definitely a Scott Telford move, and I don't agree with it. Number 7, Tower, Rainbow Six Siege. Though for the most part, the maps in Rainbow Six Siege are pretty well balanced, the tightness of its multiplayer means that even the smallest issue can make certain levels feel like completely broken messes. Tower is one of the few areas in the game that has such issues, especially when it first launched. The prevalence of wide open spaces is already antithetical to the Siege experience, but this map is littered with them, meaning you're not really encouraged to move too much in fear of being sniped from every angle. This 
problem translated over to the objectives as well, with the rooms often being too large and too penetrable oy oy, to properly defend against. It was even taken out of ranked mode for a time, but that still didn't stop the fear from creeping in when booting up a casual match. Number 6. Security – Gears of War 2 it's usually the simplicity of Gears of War maps that makes them so great, ensuring they're easy to jump into yet still retain the complexity for skilled players to use the layout smartly to their advantage. While security is no different in that regard, it's also one of the few Gears maps built around a core gimmick. To keep things interesting, you can't simply rely on the same routes through the level, with rows of insta-death security lasers cutting off different entrances and exits as the match goes on. It forces you to be constantly aware of your surroundings, and could mean the difference between life and death if you're not careful. Having a player chase you with a Nasher shotgun was horrible enough already, but it was even worse when your exit was spontaneously blocked by lasers popping out of nowhere. Number 5. Aztec – Counter-Strike while Aztec has gone through many, many iterations since its debut in the Counter-Strike series, and has actually grown into a pretty beloved map, it was easily one of the original games' most annoying battlefields. From a pure structural standpoint, success in the map is potluck, regarding whether or not you can get the chance to break away and get on top of things, mostly due to open spaces being so large and everyone being so far away from one another that it becomes a mad dash to be the first one to get the AWP. It didn't help matters that originally the map looked like a complete visual mess as well, with all the textures blending into one. That has admittedly gotten much better as time has worn on, as not only have the graphics themselves been updated, but new details have been added to make the map far more appealing to look at. That only serves to mask the pain though, and beauty is only skin deep. Number 4. Operation Locker – Battlefield 4 it was a toss-up between whether or not Operation Metro or Operation Locker deserved a position on this list, as they're both modelled on the same frantic, fast-paced gameplay that only a scant few Battlefield maps are built around. But ultimately, it was the latter that proved to be the most infuriating. Set almost entirely in an underground bunker, the tight corridors between objectives make for some of the most intense choke points in any FPS ever, with anyone caught in the middle being instantly destroyed. With over 30 players on each side, when you reach one of these areas, it's not uncommon for bodies to be flying all over the place, and you ending up being curled up on the floor like Matt Damon in Saving Private Ryan. Hell, it's so bloody bloody that you can easily get to the top of the leaderboard without killing anyone, purely by reviving, healing, or resupplying teammates as they continue to throw themselves directly into a brick wall made of bullets and fire and explosives and guns. That's what I do, admittedly, because I'm a coward, but a smart coward. Number 3. Facing Worlds – Unreal Tournament the best multiplayer maps are often the simplest, as said, and Unreal Tournament's Facing Worlds is perhaps the best testament to that fact. Essentially, two straight lines connected by two towers floating in the vastness of space, the area isn't the most visually appealing, but it distills not only Unreal Tournament, but multiplayer first-person shooters in general to their very core components. Making for the purest capture-the-flag level potentially ever, trying to get from one end to the other without taking a hit is as exhilarating as it is in as the lack of any cover means you're essentially in the reach of anyone on the map. That also means you've got nobody to blame but yourself if you get killed as well though. As the level playing field everyone is on ensues, only you can ever be frustrated at your own lack of skill. Number 2. Shipyard – Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Though half of this list could have been taken up with games from the Call of Duty franchise, with the likes of Rust and Nuketown only just missing the cut, Shipyard was the first, and still best in my opinion, map that infuriated players in this franchise. The entire level is about as big as a single room in any other map, essentially just one big square with a couple shipping containers thrown in for cover. There's really no skill involved in doing well when this map pops up in the rotation. Simply get the fastest firing gun you have, or swap to a shotgun, and and then just spam grenades in every direction and hope you manage to tag someone before they get you. The sheer amount going on is overwhelming, and if anyone manages to call in a helicopter then, well, god help you. Thankfully, the tightness of the area means the matches are at least gracefully short, with the punishment being over before you're really compelled to rage quit. Still, that doesn't make it any easier on your kill-death ratio. Number 1. Rainbow Road – Mario Kart 
A list about infuriating multiplayer maps simply wouldn't be complete without Rainbow Road at the very top, would it? The track has come in different shapes and sizes over the years, but the core of what makes it so special and so prone to making players throw their controllers slash handhelds at the wall has been retained every single time, always cementing it as a make or break moment in every Mario Kart Grand Prix. From the lack of barriers to the constant stunt jumps, every single turn on the track has a new challenge to master, and it's easy to come from speeding away in first to flagging behind in last over the space of a couple of seconds. Admittedly, Rainbow Road is always at least a visual treat, but in a way that's worse, as you'll come to associate these lushly created images with pure dread and terror. So that's our list. I don't know what you guys think down in the comments and are there any maps I missed off here? Like I said, just because they're infuriating, that doesn't mean they're bad. They just make my blood boil. Either way, while you're down there, can you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.